come to the debate, uh, part two debate on clauses 9 to 39 and schedule 3. Um, Madam Chair. I call the right hon. Prime Minister. Madam Chair, thank you. Uh, a pleasure to kick off the debate around um, part two of this bill, which is the more substantive part and I imagine the part where members will want to um, make a contribution, so mine would be brief. Um, just to acknowledge the, the statements that were actually made both by um, uh, the Hon. Alfred Naro and also um, uh, Marama uh, Davidson from the, from the Greens around the drivers of um, deprivation. Uh, and uh, I do think it's ex absolutely fair to say that we need to take in, into account uh, the totality of the environment that children are coming from when we consider issues of deprivation um, and income deprivation and material hardship. That is why the bill does include the wellbeing strategy. That is the place where uh, we do look at some of those much wider issues, uh, where we uh, look at the impact of deprivation uh, on things like access to education, the quality of housing, uh, health, access to health care, uh, and all of those um, additional issues. But in terms of the drivers of deprivation, the measures themselves give us a little bit of an indicator too. Putting aside, of course, what we already know about inadequacy of income, what we should know as a government, um, it tells us a little bit around the before and after housing costs, gives us an indication of whether or not, for instance, housing is driving some of the issues that we're seeing within households. So, so actually the measures themselves help. Um, the persistence measure also tells us a message, particularly when you see some of the um, uh, some of the indicators telling us that children at a certain age, and again, we know that we need to improve the data set around persistence, but when you see that children under a certain age, for instance, zero to, say, five, are experiencing that more persistent poverty, that tells us a little bit around the impact of the expense of childcare costs and early childhood education and the inability of caregivers to be able to balance those roles of work and care. Um, it tells us something about uh, the income adequacy of sole parents. So the measures themselves do give us a bit of an indication around the drivers um, of um, deprivation at, a, at one level. I accept that there are many levels to that, but the measures themselves are quite helpful tools to government, and I just wanted um, to uh, acknowledge that. Of course, part two of the bill establishes um, both the measures, the targets, and um, the reporting. I want to acknowledge that the targets themselves, the reason um, that we have been um, very careful around giving some uh, flexibility in that regard is, of course, if there is a change of government, it will be their prerogative as to how they want to utilise those targets. Um, so there's a requirement over certain core primary measures uh, having targets set out and others which remain an option for the government of the day. That is because there's an ultimate hope here that we will see this legislation as a framework endure, that it won't just be the tool of one government but the tool of um, many. Uh, members will know um, that outside of the four primary measures, um, which are made up of two income, one hardship and one persistent measure, um, we also um, have the material hardship lever, which is made up of the more direct measures of actual living conditions um, for households, um, and the persistent poverty um, measure, which is where multiple years are spent in income, poverty or hardship. Um, and there's also six supplementary measures um, uh, in the bill. Uh, those are included to allow further comparisons. Um, it allows us to report on changes in the depth and severity of poverty. But again, that's the areas where there's a bit more um, flexibility. Overall, though, our hope is that the suite, when taken as a whole, will enable um, governments of every persuasion to be able to use evidence-based policymaking and evidence-informed policymaking using these measures as an indicator of where the greatest need is and what will make um, the biggest difference. But I leave it to members now to make contributions, and I'm happy to contribute from the chair. Uh, I call David Seymour. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I have to commend the Prime